Hey everybody, it's Positive Bluebird and it is July 1st. Can you believe it? I feel like the holidays, the seasons have all flown by and <laughs> we've been here a little past a year already. Um, so I'm doing a vlog again and some of my uh, YouTube supporters like to hear from me in regards to what we're experiencing, what we're going through, whether it's positive, not so positive, happy, bad, sad, whatever. Um, and today I try to think optimistically about this situation because I know that I'm not the only one, but it's in regards to health insurance and my health insurance, including the kids and Gerald is, uh, is, um, Health First Colorado through Medicaid. And it's not affecting the children. It's affecting, uh, sometimes Gerald and I, um, I think right now it's under investigation mainly on, um, Gerald's, uh, Medicaid because we, as you know, bought this home together and, we had prior authorization before, during, and after, and um, even months before Gerald fell deathly sick. And so there's lawyers for a lot of entities, right? And with Medicaid, they've got their lawyers, and it's their job to investigate where money is coming from, where gifts are coming from and things like that. And so they thought that Gerald had given this house to me and then I turned around and I sold it for money and clearly not because we're all still living here. Um, and, and I understand, but trying to be patient uh, is easier said than done because we're going on a year and a half of them investigating every piece that you can imagine like bank accounts and um i think that's it resources like um uh the, the title to our our town home things like that and um so it's taking a while because of course during covid nobody's working or hardly anybody's working and so we're trying to put that into consideration that it's not just human services that's hurting for employers. Uh, everybody's hurting somewhere. Um, and so, you know, our patience is kind of wearing thin because this should be an up it, open and closed case, um, but it's not. And so now um, he still has his benefits except for food stamps. And we're going on five months that he has not had his food stamps and previously to that one, um, they were investigating me. I didn't have food stamps for six months and then I finally got them. So we're optimistic that maybe in a month, um, with the help of our attorney, uh, things will be back on track. And um, I don't go into all the detail about our client uh, attorney relationship because that's private. Uh, but just know that she's doing her part and we're doing our part. So with that aside, um, it's hard to explain. Sometimes we get really angry at Medicaid because our services under the umbrella of long-term care um, really suck. <laughs> and again, it has to do with COVID. There's no workers. Um, or you get people that are lying, not being completely truthful, messing up the schedule, getting people's names wrong. And so you can imagine uh, it's a domino effect. And so since the beginning of COVID, Gerald and I have been forking out practically thousands. And it's not an exaggeration. It's practically true. Like our Medicaid taxi with lack of drivers, uh, we're not getting picked up for our appointments. And I didn't get picked up uh, yesterday for my physical therapy for my shoulder. Um, uh, you know, I was kind of upset about it, but not to the point where it was like life or, or death. You know what I mean? Um, if it was a kidney transplant kind of thing, yeah, I'd be, I'd be upset. <laughs> um, so, you know, 
we feel like we're constantly busy because we're always having to call these other entities to file a complaint. And yesterday with uh, our transportation services through Medicaid, uh, they texted me and said that my estimated time to be picked up from my home was at 1.43. And I'm like, wait a minute, I have to be there by 1.45 to check in and have my appointment at two. And so I tried to call them and of course the wait time is like 45 minutes. So by that time, my appointment would be halfway over. And so while I was on hold for the first 15 to 20 minutes, my driver called. He's, he's kind of a, a regular driver through the taxi company. And he said, did you change the time to now uh, from 105 to 145? Because I'm out in Greeley. I think that's what he said, Greeley. And I think that's about an hour away from us. And I'm like, I got that text too. When originally they said they were going to pick me up at 105, but then they texted me and said 143. And he goes, yeah, they changed it three times on me. And I'm like, oh. So, you know, so making these phone calls takes my time away from anything that I love and enjoy doing. A lot of times I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm kind of slacking on my crafting or I'm crafting at nighttime or I try to escape if I've, I've been done with my phone calls and there's nothing else I can do for the day. And then I just say, hey, I'm going to go to my room and, and craft something. Um, uh, the other frustration is uh, I just learned this morning from my primary doctor that now my nephrologist of two and a half, almost three years, uh, has finished her internship and she's got a scholarship or a job outside of Denver Health. And so she's got me set up with a different kidney specialist and um, hopefully he's going to be caught up to speed about what I'm going through. <laughs> and again, I know I'm not, I'm not the only person that's going through like, wow, you know, my doctor was my doctor and now my doctor is on vacation or permanent leave of absence or maternity leave or they quit got fired, transferred, whatever. And, you know, how many of you are going through a lot of insurance issues during COVID, um, lack of doctors and appointments? So it's like when these doctors up and leave, then it sets us back even further because there's already a wait list. And so when my primary doctor's assistant was able to get me to Denver Health last week to get um, this back molar looked at which by the way the infection i think is 98 percent gone um they said this poofiness right here is just part of my fibromyalgia kind of sucks maybe i should go to bed like you know those women back in the day in the 1950s they had those scarves that tied around their head and to hold their chin <laughs> anyway yeah, and I, and I have a missing tooth, and that's my mouth. We're trying to work on that. So that dentist the other day, last week, was an intern as well. So I think Denver Health is like lots of um, permanent and non-permanent doctors um, and lots of uh, volunteers and students and what have you. And so the dentist was able to shave down that molar a little bit so that when I bite down, it won't hurt as much um, just to try to buy us some time and clear the infection up a little bit quicker. And we hope that the infection stays gone because I won't be able to go back to see the orthodontist at Denver Health until September. Uh, so Again, we have to be patient. I, Off camera, you can imagine I'm in my room like, you know, shaking a pillow and and hitting Toto. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, you know, so I try not to show all of that uh, online because, you know, it, it goes against my name. Um, if I am mad at home, which with all due respect... A lot of us have a right to be upset. Um, I stay upset for maybe 30 minutes or less. And then I take a deep breathing and 
get back to my crafting, my drawing, my crochet, or laughter with Gerald and the kids, um, and then play with the pets and all of that. Um, what else is new? Uh, let's see. Oh, with that Medicaid thing, let me tell you. I'm probably not going to edit this. You guys, it's going to be long because I don't have time to edit. Um, with my Medicaid and Gerald's Medicaid, we have been getting so many drivers that are venting out loud when we're in the car. That, well, I'm only making $6 today. You mean to tell me I came all the way down here from Denver let me turn off my alarm. I came all the way down here from Denver, which is 30 minutes away, just to take you a block away. You know what I mean? So they're mad about it because they don't service this area very much. Um, but we can't walk that far because to us, walking with our disabilities is going to either raise our blood pressure or make us feel really sick in the hot sun and and so it's not fair so we, we always feel like we have to explain ourselves to the public um my doctor feels bad for me because i've been told for many years that i have what's called um invisible immunity i think or hidden immunity which means that what you see on the outside is not what is going on on the inside. So a lot of people are judging me and they are judging me more than Gerald because he's a man in my opinion. And I'm not saying he looks more sick. It's like men, when they're disabled, they seem to be more believed over women because we, for once, like maybe we would like to do our eyebrows and not scare the public if the mailman came to the door and I didn't have my eyebrows on. Cause yeah, they're shaved and I, I pencil them in. I do the best that I can. <laughs> and there's a hair. I can feel a hair. Okay. Um, and people don't know that I sleep sometimes with my eye makeup on. Because I don't shower every single day. You know, like, I use, like, the moist cloths. Um, and, you know, for people with really long hair, we don't have oily hair as often as people with short hair. So, it's like, you know, I spruce up every single day. <laughs> um but this taxi driver went to pick me up because, uh, again, my transportation company uh, told my transportation taxi driver to pick me up. But they forgot to tell him that it's probably a will call when I'm done because I didn't know if I was having any procedure on my tooth that day. I was, so I was there for another hour. My driver had already shown up. He tried calling, then he called the, uh, Intilleride, and Intilleride left me a nasty message, like, I committed a crime, I performed a no-show. <laughs> no, you didn't pay attention and put it in the notes. Um, so I ended up calling uh, Metro Yellow, and, you know, if you're stranded from a medical facility, um, under long-term care, they do have to, by law, pick you up. So I gave the guy my state ID. He was fine with it. He said, okay, um, a driver should be out there within four to six minutes. I'm like, oh, that's great. So I'm waiting, and the female comes out, and, and she could tell that I couldn't see her very good because I have glasses that I could see far away, but sometimes, you know, they do work and sometimes they don't. And, um, so she came out of her way and, and guided me to the car and she recognized me and she was really happy that Gerald and I bought this town home. Well, halfway through our ride on I-25, which is 20 minutes in, and, you know, on the way back during rush hour traffic, it's 40 minutes from Denver to get to where we are. And so 20 minutes in, she's already on I-25. And we were already having a conversation about transportation and lack of transportation. And, and so I told her, you know, thank you for picking me up when, you know, my transportation didn't pick me up today for my medical, blah, 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 blah. She practically almost slammed on the brakes, turned her head looking in the back seat and said, wait a minute. This is a Medicaid account? And I go, yeah? Why? She goes, nobody told me. 
I thought I was going to make at least 50 bucks today or 100. Nope, nobody told me this was Medicaid. And I'm like, wow. And then she said, had I known that this was Medicaid, I probably wouldn't have wasted my time to come and get you. I said, really? And I stopped talking to her. I stopped talking to her the rest of the way. She goes, well, now you're quiet. I'm sorry. And she's trying to make small talk. Oh, yeah, I think I've been in your area before. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I didn't want any confrontation. I didn't want any argumentation. I didn't want my blood pressure going higher than it already was. And I said, you have a nice day. See you later. And when I already complained to transportation about not being picked up half the time or Gerald and I getting stranded after our appointments for at least two to three hours because they forget about us, it's not right. And just because we're on Medicaid does not give that person the right to judge and say, I'm not coming down there so that I just drive you and I only make six bucks off of this Medicaid account or eight dollars off this Medicaid account. That's not right. And some of them, when they have said that, you know what I've told them? Well, you know what? It might not be fair to you because you're not making much money, but it wouldn't be fair to me or my family friend if we couldn't get transportation down to the grocery store to get our medication. That shuts them up. It shuts them up. You have to defend yourself. And I used to just kind of hide and go, mm-hmm. And start feeling really bad and sorry for myself? No. Mm -mm, girlfriend, not anymore. During COVID, I feel like a lot of people around the globe have become so rude. Rude. Especially here in Colorado. So mean. Just like, guys, we are all going through the same thing at some point. We're all struggling. That's the same thing, right? We're all hungry. The food stamp people are like not there and there's probably like one person, you know, that's trying to get everybody qualified. You know, there's other resources, you know, if we have to go to a food bank and eat one day old food, then that's what we got to do, you know. But the lucky thing is, is that I have my food stamp, so I'm not going to let Gerald and his daughter obviously starve to death under the same roof. And... Human Services totally understands that and they allow it because we live in the same roof. It's not like I'm giving him my de uh, my EBT card and, and let him use it because then that is illegal. But if we're providing for the whole family under one roof, it's not illegal. So I'm not saying anybody's turning me in. <laughs> I'm just saying if you're struggling like that with like the same as me, then do it, girl. Do it. Or boy. Um, I'm kind of rambling. What else? Um, I can't really think of anything except my cat Oreo, our cat Oreo, um, is kind of having some trouble with anxiety and, uh, um, let me start over. Our cat Oreo is having anxiety ever since Cadence, uh, was removed from our home and, and euthanized and she's licking a lot. And swallowing fast. She's following Gerald all over the house. Um, sometimes monkey as well. But mostly Oreo. She's the black and white cat that we have. And she's Maine Coon. And licking privates quite a bit. Um, and urinating a lot. And drinking a lot. And so we are praying that her kidneys are okay. Because she does go to the vet on the 7th. So what we're doing right now is distracting her uh, because uh, we can't get her in right now because they're going to have to charge us. And we're under a program where we get um, preventatives for our pets for free um, under the Banfield Foundation at PetSmart. Um, and so we're distracting her from licking and, and cleaning her whole body every five minutes by just taking a string and letting her play with it and just kind of, you know, just distract her um, and see if that will help. Um, she's got plenty of water. She's drinking and eating. So maybe it's just too hot upstairs. We don't know why she doesn't come down here when it's nice and cool. <laughs> um, what else is going on? Not, not very much else is going on. The kids are doing good. Um... We're trying to get Shiloh's uh, 
birth certificate information updated so that she can get a job. Um, she has to wait on a Colorado State ID because of other personal reasons surrounding custody uh, that Gerald uh, won about four and a half years ago. But sadly, his ex maliciously sabotaged some paperwork and documentation, uh, legal documents, uh, regarding their daughter and so I can't go into all the detail with that um, and so we're slowly working on that and I'm helping them so we have an appointment uh, in the coming days so anyway um, that's that she's still uh, hanging out with her girlfriend Miranda and some other friends over the summertime and my son is still working at the OG and making new friends and that's I got a rubber band stuck and let's see Gerald is doing okay he's cutting back on his antidepressant as uh, the family and I have noticed that he um, hasn't been very expressive and hasn't been very motivated um, or talkative and so his antidepressant was kind of uh, a little too much. So he cut that in half with permission of the doctor. And, you know, that just started yesterday. So we're hoping that, you know, he'll be able to be more expressive and, and have facial expressions. And, and, you know, he doesn't always frown, um, you know, but you have to kind of start the conversation and uh, get him going and all of that and, and joke around with him and then he'll smile and laugh. But, um, we're helping him so that he doesn't fall into another stroke or depression again. Um, as far as me, I'm in stage four and I'm not worried about it. I want to say it's part of the acute kidney injury because of this and some mild stress, but maybe it'll go back to three B. I don't know. I usually try not to think about any of that stuff. Like once I get the results, to me, it's kind of like, eh, same old, same old, <laughs> you know, and I just keep perceiving to, to live life to the fullest. I think I used to dwell a lot more when I was living on government housing because I was bored. There wasn't a whole lot to do. Um, but here in our new home, it's like, there's always something to do. And being Gerald's caretaker, I'm not like a hundred percent at his hip. He does a lot of things, um, on his own. He schedules his own appointments. He can remember certain dates and time. Sometimes he does get things mixed up where he thought, um, something happened three years ago and I had to correct him. It's only been about two or three months. Um, and so... You know, that's why I'm going to go with him to a, a few places um, and appointments that are coming up. So, um, I think that's about it. This one was mainly about how we don't like Medicaid. Like, Medicaid, yeah, to everybody else, they pay for things. But when you're on long-term Medicaid, you have to owe that back usually through an estate planning uh, program. And I, like I said, we have our own estate planning attorney that is handling things and we just like to keep that private and, and we just try not to worry about it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 49 and it's usually taking place for people that are 55 and older, uh, that become catatonic, um, or in a nursing home or pass away. And I, I'm, I got, I believe I've got several years on me. I really do. Um. Alport syndrome is a very long, livable disease, and I like that. I, I like to hear that. However, for men, it usually isn't, and so I worry about my son, who is 21, and like his father, <laughs> you know, doesn't want to go to the doctors, and I can't make him. And, you know, he, if he really feels sick or feels something's wrong, he needs to be the adult to make that appointment. You know, there's nothing I could do. He knows what the numbers are and I'm not going to hold his hand. We all have to grow up and learn at some point, right? Um, Shiloh's 17 now and, and she now has a little more freedom. Uh, and, you know, hey, can I hang out with my girlfriend for like, Fourth of July weekend and we're going to go to the lake or we're going to go here. We're going to go there and sure. 
you know, and we trust everybody. So um, we're going to stay here because this seems to be the, the it spot for 4th of July. Why go out and try to order a Medicaid taxi that's not going to pick you up? <laughs> And if they did, they're probably going to leave you stranded at a park somewhere, right? When you can sit in the comfort of your own home and look out every single window from the front to the back. It is like a major show out here. And uh, you guys might remember that I filmed that last year. So uh, that's about it, guys. It's been about 25 minutes. I probably might add music, but I don't think I'm going to spend time editing. Uh, it is what it is. This is my real life. I'm an open book to an extent. And I, I'm really grateful to share that with you. And I'm happy to share it with you, those that are a part of my life and, and find this helpful. Just know that I'm not the only one and neither is Gerald and the kids or anybody else in Colorado. We are all suffering and struggling some way or another. And uh, if we can just shine a light and say, hey, it is what it is. Uh, COVID has really destroyed the world and it's going to take a long time to rebuild and, and get back out there and say, hey, you know, give me a job. And if I can work, I wish I could. I really do wish I could, but I can't. I'm sitting on the floor right now <laughs> uh, because I don't have my, my phone stand and I can't stand longer than five minutes. I just, there's times where I wish that I can go and do something and like sit in a parade or stand in a parade at the sidewalk and I can't do it anymore. Um, so there was something I was going to say to that. Uh, oh, the concert. We don't even know if we're going to that concert. It was supposed to be like um, Joan Jett, Def Leppard, and two other bands. I can't remember if it was... Uh... <sighs> I can't think of it. I can't think of the name, but it's two other bands. Um, and, and we don't even know if they're having it at the uh, football stadium or not. So we're supposed to be going, I think, in July. So we're going to look at that. But um, at least there's stadium seats so that I can just sit. But I might be a little uncomfortable for a while and tossing and turning and <laughs> in my chair <laughs> all right that's enough rambling from me i'm on gabba petting and gabba 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 <laughs> all right guys peace out and stay positive